Now, as you know, this is a, a night which is called uh, Tales of the Trail. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not a very good master of silver. <laughs> uh, so, we, everybody, uh, I mean everybody, is going to come up here tonight, just have a few words to say. Okay? Okay, you've got five pieces of uh, toilet paper, right? So it should be right for a couple of days. <laughs> so now the idea is, with the toilet paper, Tony, I know you've got a special presentation, but what, I, no, don't wrap up the toilet paper, just unwrap it. So what I'd like you to do, and what I would like everybody else to do, I'll show you. You, you tear off one piece of paper and say, my name is Bernard Sheridan Scott. And you can tear off another piece and say, well, my name is Bernard. You, would you like to have a go? <laughs> my name is Bernard Sheridan Scott. <laughs> There's a room full of them. And then you tear off another piece and say, well, I live in uh, Adelaide, South Australia. Where do you live, Tony? I live in Queensland, mate. In Queensland. Which part of Queensland do you live in, Tony? I live in Brisbane, of course. Oh, the only place to live. In Brisbane. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now introduce to you Mr. Tony Tokcha. Hi, oh, guys. Well, <laughs> this is only going to be quick because um, dessert's coming out, but boy, I tell you what, if I was a Bromby, I wouldn't be running away from here at the moment. <laughs> okay, we're actually going to be talking about some of the things that I did um, with the books and people have asked me why did I start writing the books, uh, how do the books work and what part of my life they covered and so on. Okay, so I'm going to sum it up in pretty easy words. I, the first person that got me going on the books was my wife Diane. Um, we were coming back from the Gold Coast after a weekend and she just turned around and said, well, are you ever going to write a book about some of the stuff you've done? And I said, yeah, maybe, one day. So she started asking questions, where would it start, all that sort of thing. And as we're driving along, here she is, tapping it into her iPad. My name's Diane Torture. I'm married to Tony. We both live in Rochdale South in Brisbane and I've got a poem for you tonight. It's totally sexist and politically incorrect, which I thought was very suitable for all the time. It goes against my feminist principles, but I thought it would be good for a laugh. Can you hear me okay? Not too soft? Alright. It's called Fifty Shades of Grey. From a husband's point of view. The missus bought a paperback down Shepherd and Mallet Way. I had a look inside her bag. Twas fifty shades of grey. Well, I just left her to it, and at ten I went to bed. An hour later she appeared, and the sight filled me with dread. In her left hand she held a rope, and in her right a whip. She threw them down upon the floor and then began to strip. Oh, oh. Well, 50 years or so ago, I might have had a peak, but Mabel hasn't weathered well. She's 84 next week. <laughs> Watching Mabel bump and grind could not have been much grimmer, and things went from bad to worse when she toppled off her zimmer. <laughs> she struggled back upon her feet a couple of minutes later. She put her teeth back in and said, I am your dominator. <laughs> now, if you knew our Mabel, you'd see just why I spluttered. I'd spent two months in traction for the last complaint I'd uttered. <laughs> She stood there, nude and naked, Ooh. bent forward just a bit. I went to hold her sensual-like and stood on her left tit. <laughs> Mabel screamed. 
her teeth shot out. My God, what had I done? She moaned and groaned and then shouted out, Step on the other one! <laughs> well, readers, I can tell no more about what occurred that day. Suffice to say, my jet black hair turned 50 shades of <laughs> In my hand, I hold a ball, white and dimpled, rather small. Oh, how bland it does appear, this harmless looking little sphere. By its size, I could not guess the awesome strength it does possess. But, so, but since I fell beneath its spell, I've wandered through the fires of hell. <laughs> My life has not been quite the same since I chose to play this stupid game. <laughs> it rules my mind for hours on end. A fortune it has made me spend. It has made me curse and made me cry and hate myself and want to die. It promises me a thing called power if I hit it straight and far. To master such a tiny ball should not be very hard at all. But my desires, the ball refuses and does exactly as it chooses. It hooks, slices, dribbles and dies and disappears before my eyes, particularly in this rough out there. <laughs> Often it will have a whim to hit a tree or take a swim. With miles of grass on which to land, it finds a tiny patch of sand. Then has me offering up my soul, if only it would find the hole. It's made me whimper like a pup and swear that I will give it up and take a drink to ease my sorrow. But the ball knows I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, well, what does that make me? No, I mean... Children and dogs. Okay, children and dogs. In so, that order? Yeah, that'll be fine. Now, what have you got to say about your children? We have two, we have two grandchildren, we have one dog. It's a greyhound, and I'm going now. Hang on, man. Hang on. Train men came by a billabong Under the shade of a cool of our tree and he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boy you come a waltzing Matilda with me waltzing Matilda waltzing Matilda you come a waltzing Matilda with me and he sang as he watched Do that, so I'm going to be very quick. Element of and I haven't surprise. got my glasses on. You want mine, darling? Stand, stand proud, you noble swingers of clubs and losers of balls. A recent study found the average golfer walks about 9,000 miles a year. 900, sorry. 900 miles a year. Another study found golfers drink an average of 22 gallons of alcohol a year. That means, on average, Golfers get about 41 miles to the gun. <laughs> kind of makes you proud, almost feel like a hobby. <laughs> well, My grandmother and Banjo Pattis were, were, were first cousins and used to play together as kids together. Is that, what, so what I played you, the banjo, so thank you, Eddie. Well, did you used to <laughs> play the banjo? Talk as long as you like with one sheet, then you can talk as long as you like with the other one. But hello, Jennifer, how are you tonight? Well. You're well, yes, are you? Yeah. Yeah. How's the golf been going? Uh, better than last year. Better than last year? Well, yes. that's an improvement, isn't it? I play three game, two games of golf a year. <laughs> two games of golf a year. Where? Okay, so one of them's on the uh, Chase in the Sun tournament. Yes. Where is the other one? 
I played the Holden Scramble with my children. The Holden Scramble with your children? Thunderbird, Queensland. Well, can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Uh, no, I don't know. Is that <laughs> Well, you're the first person I've ever met that uh, plays golf and you don't know that you're playing. Um, when, you had, <laughs> when you had a husband and a yeah. son have and you, a daughter... Have you got a husband? Have you? What's I his did, name? I did have a husband. You did have a husband, yeah. I, I had a wife once, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you've got competitive family members, um, you know, it's better to look after the grandkids. But was your husband on a lower handicap than you, was he? Oh, he was, yeah. I was the handicap. <laughs> you would do that. Now, come on, darling, don't be like that. No, now, just, yeah, now, now, I'll just stay out of it for a little bit and I'll let you uh, yeah, tell all these beautiful okay, people um, about yourself. I have, when I have a husband, my two children and my grandchildren are very sports minded. So, when I come to me, I just let them do everything and I watch the kids because they're very competitive. They give each other, oh, shit. <laughs> Quietly. But no, I. Um, I did this with Alf this year. It's my third, I've had three years of, of as a support. Yes, and there's two years playing. So um, I'm not doing that great, but anyway, it's good. But it's good to have my family here and my friends, Peter and Tracy went, come with me. So it's a bit, and I'm from Agnes Waters in central Queensland, and we all know about it because <coughs> Sandy knows history of 1770. So we've heard, heard all about it. Oh, right. good. Um, Casey Lee Markson from originally central Queensland, but now living in Wide Bay, where the best rum in Queen, where the best rum in Australia comes from, Bundaberg yes. Rum. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, um, my whole life's been about sport, pretty much. I've played cricket for Australia. Uh, oh, is that right? Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. We're not, get, we're not letting get past that. You played cricket for Australia. Can you just diverse on that a little bit more and tell us how it come about and? Um, it came about at the age of five. My Good. dad and my brother played cricket, and I said I can do that. So I Good went on. out there <laughs> Good on you. and played it, and played it since I was five. And yeah, at the age of twelve, I made the first Queensland team, and just everything went from there. Excellent. But stopped playing when I was twenty-five, twenty-six, after two knee reconstructions and one shoulder reconstruction. <laughs> do, you, do you think you will start? Playing you the game or not? Oh, I like the big bash, so we might one day we might go out there again. Good we'll money. do it. Yeah, all you gotta do is get in. It's good money it. now. They're getting like twenty five thousand dollars a year. I don't need twenty five dollars a game. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it, really. But I played cricket, moved into my career. Um, I'm a greenkeeper. I love golf on the greenkeeping side more than the playing side. So I've travelled the world on different golf courses. So I travelled America and spent a whole year in America doing all PGA tournaments and. Got to meet all the stars and everything like that. Played cricket in, on a putting oh, green with Ernie Els, Aaron Badley, Adam Scott, um, Tiger Woods, and everyone on the rainy day. So I'm well. How happy. many pieces of toilet paper have you got, Tracy? One. Only one in the spot. <laughs> I've only got a little bump. <laughs> right, did you hear that? Tracy has only got a little bump. <laughs> Tracy, what have you for us tonight? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please give Tracy a round of applause. <laughs> you don't want to know what that's been. <laughs> okay. No, my name's Peter Webb. Hello, Peter. And I am the proud husband of Tracy, of course. Good on Excellent. And we have um, a couple of boys in the family. Probably one of our proudest, of one of my proudest things is my son has uh, a few years ago had a scholarship with the Broncos. Oh, he, was, um, he was 14 year old when he got his scholarship and uh, he went on and he was playing some good football too, the young fellow, but he, he did a, a cruciate ligament and then he actually split his fibula and his tibia so that could give his give his football career away. But um, they're happily married now, he's happily married. Um, living in Bundaberg, and he's a rum distiller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, what, what is he? He's a rum distiller. He oh, works. rum distiller. Oh. Yeah, right. He actually makes the rum. Okay, I didn't quite hear what you said. Uh, yeah, but needless to say, he makes it, but I don't get too much of the damn stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would, I've lived in central Queensland all my life. Love fishing. 
all the sports, of course. And um, we've got two grandkids now. Um, Thomas is six, going on five, going on six, and the eldest fella is eight. And they are just sports crazy, so they keep us going. So, yeah, that's about it. Well, thank you very much. Are you ready? I need your help. Once a jolly swag, once a jolly golfer played on the colour ball under the sun of the Australian sky. And he swung and he putted and he waited for the hole in one. Who'll come a golfing the nullar ball with me? Golfing the nullar ball, golfing the nullar ball. Who'll come a chasing the sun with me? And we'll swing and we'll putt and we'll wait for the hole in one. Who'll come a golfing the nullar ball with me? Down came a crow and picked up his golf ball. Up jumped the golfer and cursed at the thief. And he tore as he broke his five iron at the raven. You'll come a golfing with me. With me. Shut up, you're not reading the words. Golfing the dollar ball. Golfing the dollar ball. You'll come a golfing. And you swing and we'll cut and we'll wait for the hole in one. Who'll come a golfing the dollar ball with me? Along came a pirate, always took off his treasure. Up came the golfers, one, two, three. Where's the jolly treasure? You got home, did it cooler? Beyond the gold treasure, treasure, watch me. Golfing the dollar ball, golfing the dollar ball. You'll come a toasting the sun with me. And we'll swing and we'll putt and we'll wait for the hole in one. Who'll come a golfing the dollar ball with me? Into the vehicles, all came the golfers. Down, down the track, they drove with glee. It'll be five o'clock soon, and the drinks are already frosty. A thirst that will urge by you and me. Golfing the dollar ball, golfing the dollar ball. Who'll come and chase in the sun? <laughs> and we'll pass and we'll wait for the one who come a golfing the night of war with me. Only too soon we'll be in Kaguli playing the links with friends all the new. Heading off home soon, happy and contented. And we'll be always remember how we chased the sun. Golfing the dollar ball, golfing the dollar ball. Thank you for chasing the sun with me. And we swung and we putted and we're waiting for the hole in one. Thank you for chasing the sun with me. got something that's very different from everything that's been done tonight. Mine's just a little golf story. Some may think it's fact, some may think it's fiction. I think it's fact. Draw the scene. There are two ladies standing on the first tee, ready to tee off. There are two men walking up the 18th fairway, have almost finished. First lady hits off, beautiful shot, straight down the middle. Second lady hits off, and she hits one of those drives that all of us have done at times, where it doesn't really get above waist height, and it's an absolute flyer, 
that's curving round to the rocks. The poor chap walking up the fairway. Oh God! 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 You hit me, God! <laughs> the lady rushes over to him. I'm so sorry. I'm so. God, it hurts. God, it hurts. It's killing me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look. I'm a masseuse. I can help. I can massage the offended part and fix things for you. God, please, lady, please! God! <laughs> He's lying on the ground. She reaches down. She undoes his pants, undoes the fly, puts her hand in. God, lady, God, it hurts! Oh, God! She starts the massage. Oh God, lady! Oh God, lady! Oh God! Oh lady! Oh jeez! Oh, this is wonderful! Oh, oh! As you said, I'm so glad that helped. Oh, that was wonderful, lady. But can you fix me? Fix me, thumb? I think you broke it. <laughs> I'd like to tell you that that man down there is not my husband. <laughs> <laughs> he just persists in following me around. He just keeps following you around, does he? Yeah. yeah. Well, are, you are, are you walking? <laughs> are you walking or have you got a best for scooter? I'm walking. You're walking. Okay. Yeah. How fast do you walk? Very. Very fast. Absolutely. And he still keeps up with you, doesn't he? He tries. He tries, yeah. <laughs> well, what I suggest is don't put your blinker on when you're turning left or right. <laughs> now, Sybil, Sybil, that, that's an interesting name. You don't hear it that often. What is your middle name, Sybil? Mary. Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary, Mary. Is that, who's got a middle name called Mary? You have. You're a lucky lady, aren't you? Mary. Mary. Sybil. Sybil is so lucky. What's your surname? Richardson. Richardson, yeah. yeah. Do you have any children, Sybil? I do. And what are their names? I have a daughter called Tracy and a son called Jason. And you sound very, very proud of them. Don't I you? am, extremely. Do they play sport or like golf or anything? Or they're not that silly? No, they're not that stupid. <laughs> yeah. that's stupid. Well, I was just trying to be nice and say that. <laughs> silly. But you, you want to put as stupid, you know. They're bloody idiots, aren't they? If they if they play golf, they're idiots. Absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I just like to be, you know, truthful with these sort of things. So, tell me, have you got a comment to make about uh, this trip? I do. I, I want to eat my sweets. <laughs> it's been absolutely wonderful. I've enjoyed every single moment. Um, met some wonderful people. Played some awful golf, but that's part of the whole thing. Um, my wonderful husband and I have just really enjoyed ourselves. So it's it. wonderful now, is it? <laughs> not well, uh, that's not her husband. No, that's not your husband. Yeah, be true, that's not your husband. So, where is your husband? He's at home. That sounds like that song, Dear John. Oh, how I Sybil hate is the masseuse. Sybil, <laughs> Sybil, thank you, my darling. Do you know it's round? It's so round that 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 is why you're able to get there on the ground. Through it all. Well, and she fixed the thumb. I really, really want to thank you for coming up here. Yeah. Okay, now, this little thing's from the White Horse Inn. My heart is broken, but what care I? Such pride inside me has woken. I'll try my best not to cry by by when the final farewells must be spoken. I'll join the Legion, that's what I'll do. 
and in some far distant region where human hearts are staunch and true, I shall start my life anew. Goodbye, it's time I sought a foreign climb where I may find a real time is missed by the girls I've kissed. In some Abyssinian French dominion I shall do my bit and fall for the flag if I must. Where the desert sand is nice and handy, I'll be full of grit. I won't see my heels for the dust. I'll do or die, I'll know the reason why when told. Of all was lost and for the fatherland. Goodbye, goodbye, I wish you all a last goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, I wish you all a last goodbye. You reckon, you, you reckon someone else is next to money, but you want to go home already. <laughs> Not that late. <laughs> um, and, and ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you also Paula as well. Yeah. Um, Paula and I um, have been part of the Kelgary community for 50 years. And Not 50 we've, years. Well, we've been, <laughs> well, I've been part. Uh, we, um, we both of the Italian birth and we came to Australia and um, we've made a life here. We've had three kids and we've now got six grandkids. And um, I got involved with Dunnable Links in 2004 when we first kicked it off. And Paula and I, Paula supported me all the way and, and we built this golf course with, a, with the help of a bunch of good people. Um, the funny parts, and I don't even know that I've even got any funny parts in me, but I'm, I'm not a really funny person, but... Paul and I love life, and, and we've had a wonderful life together, and, and we're going to have even more wonderful lives, and we're off to Europe um, at the end of May, and we're going to have 14 weeks over there, and it's going to be special, but um, we just want to say, Thanks for being a part of Chasing the Sun and, and it's our privilege to be able to say that you're, we're amongst friends. We've done seven Chasing the Suns now and I reckon that I could pick up the phone and ring any one of those people that have done that and we're talking about probably 500 people within that uh, sphere of or that amount of time, I reckon I could pick up the phone to any one of them and say, I'm coming over your way and I reckon I'd, I reckon I'd get a berth. So, um, certainly the job as, and whatever uh, uh, Bernie says, the job is better from my side because I get the opportunity to meet great people like you. And really, at the end of the day, that's what we do. And Paula looks after the grandkids, I look after notable links. We fight in blue like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, we've been married 43 years. I reckon we're going to be married a lot longer. And yeah, yeah. Um, she's the lady of my life. Oh. <laughs> I know you won't get Eric up, but Eric and I have been married for 52 years. We've got three children, we've got God knows how many grandchildren and about six great-grandchildren. So yeah, we've got lots of people. Um, I don't know what to say. In the year 2000, I ran with the Olympic torch. That's my claim to fame. Um, 2001, I don't think I did anything, but 
2000 and, no, 2001 and 2003, I swam to Rocknest. I did the Rotto swim, which is 21 kilometres. But I was in a team of four. I didn't do it on my own. Did you take it in turns? Did yeah, you? Oh, well, the real life. Okay. Um, I don't know what year it was. I abseiled down the Allendale building. Does anybody know the Allendale building in Perth? It's the tallest building in Perth. 375 metres. I abseiled down that. You're going to tell them how old you I'm not going to tell them anything. <laughs> how, how old were you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 60 when she did it. <laughs> and a couple of years in a row we walked from Border Village, no, from Euclid to Border Village. You ran. No, I didn't run. You ran. <laughs> That's, a That's about my claim to fame. And I wrote a little ditty that, this is it. We're going to play golf, said hubby. Grab your gear and grab your buggy. We're going to chase the sun. We're going to Eucla. Uh, we're going to Sejuna, sorry. You'll love it. You'll have fun. Up before dawn to toast the sun. You told me it'd be fun. You lied. You said I would have fun. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for us, Eric? Well, I got, got involved with another ball links eight years ago. I had been a meeting at Cockerbury and they asked me to come along and be involved ever since. But before I started golfing, I used to pistol shoot. Uh, you used to what, sorry? Pistol shoot. Pistol shoot. Okay. Now, now don't be sure of that black thing there, Eric. Just move a little bit closer. So, he used to pistol shoot. What's pistol shoot got to do with golfing? Well, with pistol shooting, the eyesight started going and give pistol shooting away. Ah. And took up golf. Oh. Yeah. Right. So can you can you actually see the golf ball when you hit it? Not really. Or? Yeah, well it, I got me, I got my seeing dog over there. You got your seeing dog. <laughs> Do, is your seeing dog dog uh, marred by any chance? Is that a match? Yeah. Oh. We won't take that any further. <laughs> Well, what, what I suggest is you don't use so much toilet paper, then you won't cover her eyes and she won't be able to see you. Now, tell us a little bit more about yourself, Eric. Come on. I oh, know you've got plenty to say. Oh, it's too much to talk. But there was two, two men playing golf, playing match play. And they come to the 18th hole and they're both equal. And that one hits off and right down the centre of the fairway. Next boat tees off and his ball goes off into the bush and they, they head down there and they're looking through the bush and spent about five minutes and they said oh the bloke who lost the ball he says oh don't worry about it he says you go and play your shot and I'll play this ball look for mine and you know, the bloke goes out and he chips onto the green the next thing the bloke in the bush goes oh and this ball comes in it and out of the bush and lands about six inches from the hole and he said to him, how can I call him a cheat? He says, I got his blue ball in my pocket. Ah. <laughs> it's John, welcome. Oh, Looks well. like you've got a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> I just want a credit on it then. <coughs> you want a credit on it? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, you keep start talking and I'll work out whatever I can do. What would you like to know? Well, well, I would like to know how come you're such a wonderful person. <laughs> you have to ask me mum that. <laughs> okay, well, what, what was your mum's name, John? Oh, you, it's a German name, Kuni Gundel. Kuni Gundel. Kuni Gundel, it's a German Kuni name. Gun, 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 gun. Kuni Gundel. You won't get it. Kuni Gundel. It's a, it's a mouthful, isn't it? It is. Tell me again. Tell everybody else what it is. Too. What did they shorten it to, Johnny? Ah, uh, just Gundel. 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 Yeah. Mm. Good German name. Yep. D now this is in. We, where were you born, John? Northern. Northern. I'm still there. Hang on. Where's Northern? Is that in Western Australia? Yeah. 
They okay. had 100 cases from Perth. So your mum and dad come out from yep. Germany, yeah. did they? Yeah, yeah. you're wrong. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, 1949, my dad was on the first um, boat to come to Australia as a displaced person. So he was Polish and mother was German, so that's a bit of a combination. No, they fought each other <laughs> in the war and ended up marrying. So yes, and I was born in Northern, 51. Friend and I, we've got one son, he's 39. Took over our business about three years ago, and we have four grandchildren, three girls, Mackenzie, my name Miller, and little Archie, he's five, and he's a rebel. I think he takes after, takes after a friend, he's got that blondie hair. I'm crying now, oh. <laughs> So yes, um, been involved with sport all my life in Northern, you know, football, played footy to 35, coached local footy teams, coached from Port Hedland, then decided to take up golf, and wasn't too good. I'm a real social golfer, more than a professional, but I certainly enjoy it. And, um, one of my mates, and Elf's mates, um, met up a few years ago in Broome, and he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm semi-retired. He said, oh, right. And that was in the back burner. He, he rang up Elf and said, better get this guy on board. So Elf rang up about eight months ago and took about three or four months to get me on board because I've been retired, you don't want to get another job because, I mean, once you've been in Rotary 25 years and um, been involved with our Northern Country Club, been on the board there 10 years and so on, so on, coaching junior footy, you sort of want a break after 40 years, so I thought, oh well. Anyway, I often managed to convince me we got together and I joined the board and it's found I certainly very happy to come on board. It's a, certainly a brilliant organisation. This is our first trip with Virgin, so you know, we thoroughly enjoyed it like I guess everyone else in this room. It's certainly been a great time. Met some wonderful people because, you know, really everyone is here to have a good time and I think that's very, very important and everyone gets along, helps each other and I'm certainly glad I'm here, Bernie. Well, there's one, one thing on, on through. There's a couple of things I like to know. How many premierships did you win playing football? Oh, mate. I think we're going to You don't want to know, mate. Played th England. 300 games of footy and won one. <laughs> and, and you said your virgins to this trip, have you lost your virginity on the way? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's ironic you know, to play in the Premiership side if you're passionate about football. You know, I played 1970 in the Grand Final, 1980 in the Grand Final, got beat, 1981, then I won one in 82. So Good on you. Yeah, I was quite happy about that, yes. Yeah. I'd, I'd just like to finish off with a little nitty bitty you only live once but if you do it right once is enough written by may west <laughs> pretty good now fran would you like me to lower the microphone a little bit for you well everyone says i'm so short you're better okay <laughs> all right but the other thing is you left me till late and it's dark and i can't even read what i've written you like mine, well i've got mine, his because mine. mine aren't strong enough and he's stronger than me and you know well, something, I'm not giving you my toilet paper because look at the size <laughs> of it. I'll be here till 12 o'clock. Does, does that mean or tell you anything? Or <laughs> now, because I can't read it very good, I'm not sure that it's going to go down well. Cause well it's, just just it's, take your time. It's really dark here yeah. and it's pretty... <laughs> that's great, that's great. This is This is a little story actually about life. And as we get older, life evolves and we do different things in our life and this is my poem about life. Ever feel there's something missing in this life? you call your own, and these thoughts and feelings surface whenever you're alone. Your mind takes you on a journey to all the feelings that you hide, the unrest needs, the unmet needs and unreached dreams you lock away inside. All the passions and desires and the goals that you once made and the promise to yourself that you will never let them fade. Life's like a treasure chest that's fallen to the bottom of the sea, waiting to be rescued, waiting to be free. 
If that treasure chest was opened, what would you find inside? What special talents would emerge that you allowed to hide? <coughs> what possibilities and future dreams could see the light of day that you could bring forth in your life if you could find a way? So take the time to look within and find what's in your heart. Push aside your time poor life and from this moment, make a start. To find all the hidden treasures lying dormant in your soul and unleash your special talents and allow them to unfold. Thank you very much, Pat. Yeah. Uh, uh, where were you born, Ollie? What's that got where to do with you? Where were you born? What's that got to do with you? Well, they, they go, Ollie, 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 Ollie. It doesn't sound like you were born in Australia, but were you born in Australia? Good one, Bernie. I wasn't born in Australia. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I knew he wasn't an Aussie. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, you are. Of course you are. You're, you're, on, you're on the tournament called Chasing the Sun, and you are in Australia, and you are an Aussie because you're in Australia. Time. Am I really on the look, chase of the sun? Look, I'll just stay out of it. Tell us what you've got to say. Um, yeah, my name's Ollie Els. Um, we, myself and Liz, uh, live in Boyne Island uh, in Queensland, which is central Queensland, not near Brisbane. Um, we've been there for ooh, a few years now, and uh, we decided that, uh, having retired, that we would be wandering around Australia. And we happened to be in the June at the end of June, the gen end of uh, January, and somebody told us about this competition called Chasing the Sun. Wasn't me. So <laughs> either we phoned Alf, and Alf said, "Yep, you're on." So we spent two months down in Port Lincoln playing golf, and then came up, and here we are. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's wonderful. I really do. I think I agree this is with you. just marvellous. Uh, I'll only say one thing. I, I, I had the privilege of playing in a very, very pucker golf course in England. You know, you have one of those huts. You know, hut, you know Andrews, you know, when we need to the starter, he says, you know, Jordan Spieth, you know, you know, that sort of thing. You know, <laughs> and he wasn't saying any of that. He was peering through his window. <laughs> And he was watching, sort of teeing off and so forth. He, he, he said, through the tannoy, he said, Excuse me, will that gentleman move off the ladies' tee and drive off the men's tee? And they, a lot of people were around, and they, a lot of people were actually looking at what was going on. And uh, anyhow, a bit of time went by. Excuse me, sir, will you get back on the men's tee? That is the ladies' tee. This bloke turned round and he said, Why don't you bugger off? I'm playing my second shot. <laughs> Uh, you've got a, you've got a sort of bit of a. Uh, I got half a piece. Bit shattered sort of. Topic. I got half a piece. Yeah. So Liz, yeah. what would you like to? What can we like to either say to me? Or I think what's that? been interesting Boys. about the loop paper is, are you a folder or a scruncher? <laughs> There's lots of scrunchers here. That's after the event. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, my name's Liz Oz, um, married to Ollie Oz. I only took up golf because we were going to be going around Australia in 2013. And I'd always said, I'd rather take a dog for a walk than a ball. <laughs> um, so I joined, played golf, and then he managed to get me to do a competition by taking me to social golf one Sunday last May and saying, oh dear, I think we're in a competition. <laughs> <laughs> but I just did put a little ditty together for tonight um, and it goes like this get ready to say four we're off across the Nullarbor we're chasing the sun in the name of fun whilst lofting our clubs on a trip round the pubs 
we'll sing and we'll eat and what amazing people we'll meet. And after this afternoon I added one more bit. And then at Madura, oh what a furora. With the aid of a tree, my ball ran free. That's nearest the pin. It gave me a win! <laughs> Never a bore on the Nullarbor. <laughs> um, the Southern Wanderers. Thank you. Um, my name is Maggie, and we are the Southern Wanderers, and we for were formed many years ago by not being a club, but being friends, and then started a club. So we've been going for a very long time, some have passed, and we have carried on. We always go away together twice a year as well, and we have a great deal of laughter and fun. And we have, last time we went, we decided we would love to do the Nullarbor, but we didn't know how to go about it, and we thought we would do it on our own. And then Eileen and Jim um, found out about ELF, and they went up and visited ELF, and uh, then they found out all about it, and that's how all of us have come to be on this trip, and we are very pleased that we are here. Um, and on the way, um, Beryl and... Um, Eileen mainly and Jim were travelling in a car and they made up some poems. So we would like Eileen to read them for you. And since there's so many of us, we just decided we'd all come as a group and let Eileen just do all the work. <laughs> Good idea. And I'll teach you to say Well done. The Sons of Ellen. The Southern Wanderers came out of the West with Drivers, pitchers and putters put to the test. Easy to spot in blue and white. And we did have <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying a drink every night. Now chasing the sun home to the west. He is hoping our golf will stand up to the test. But it's laughter. Shyacking. And friendship we do best. <laughs> we did actually bring a picture of Hutter and our driver, but it's sitting over there. We <laughs> thought it was a bit late in the evening. <laughs> but there's some others. We all know a man named Caputo. Mamma mm, mia! <laughs> He's finally emerged from the shadows. His obsessions are no drinking and driving and keeping his clients surviving. We reckon Capuzio has become our supremo. <laughs> Happy golfing, Mr. Cazuto. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> At last, yeah, it's a bit much. <laughs> At last, we've all met Alpha Cap in the flesh. For months, he's kept our computers in stress. It's best foot forward in supporting the doctor who flies for the sick and cares for those who've come a cropper. In Kalgoorlie, it's heels for the girls, ties for the boys, but we have to dress proper. And our fourth one is. From across Australia we've come, embarking on chasing the sun. It's champagne, oysters, and scorecards at Sejuna. Madura is Brumby's run, a smorgasbord, and maybe a schooner. He's hoping for new friendships, good golf, and some fun. And our last one is, there's a new word out among Nullarborites. It's ish. <laughs> Six-ish and seven-ish. In Sejuna, we've heard things like bloody hell. 
that I know or shite, <laughs> as golfers one by one hit the bushish and land in the sandish. <laughs> Let's hope my Kalgoorlie uh, how elf has managed the right tonish. <laughs> Marion, take got, it away, my darling. Well, I've got um, some right, revised rules of golf, which I think will apply to chasing the sun. A ball hitting a tree shall be deemed not to have hit the tree, the said tree. <laughs> hitting a tree is bad luck and has no place in a scientific game. The player should estimate how far the ball would have travelled if it had not hit the tree and play the ball from there. <laughs> the missing ball is on or near the course somewhere and eventually will be found and pocketed by someone else. It has thus become a stolen ball and the player should not compound the crime by charging himself with a penalty stroke. If a punt passes over the hole without dropping, it is deemed to have dropped. <laughs> the law of gravity holds that any object attempting to maintain a position in the atmosphere without something to support it must drop. <laughs> the law of gravity su supersedes the law of golf. <laughs> the same go goes for a ball that stops at the brick of the hole and hangs. Defying gravity. You can't defy the law. A putt that stops, stops so close to the cup that it inspires comments like, you could blow it in. Maybe blow it in, but only if it is no more than eight centimetres from the hole. <laughs> After all, no one wants to make a travesty of the game. <laughs> Look, uh, we've lost already. We will be quick, because we know everybody's getting ready for, for the land of nod but we're all from the same club in Sydney. We wanted to call ourselves the Nullarbor Nymphs, but then when, when we tried to coin that phrase, we were told there was already an nymphomaniac in the room. <laughs> so we have to, so we have, we have to change our, our tune a little bit. And talking about the tune, bugger it, somebody has taken over Walsing Matilda twice now. <laughs> we wrote this to the tune of Wasi Matilda and had a few words to Bernie here and he said, no way. He said, uh, you've got to at least reach the level of Music 101 to sing that. So we went away and rewrote it to Baba Black Sheep. <laughs> we can't say that anymore. Oh my God. Oh, Baba Black Sheep. Sorry. And, and and anyway, that, that didn't pass muster. <laughs> Uh, so for all those, uh, we know there's some marvellous musical talent in this room and we apologise in advance, but we've chosen a tune, some of you may know, it's an old uh, marine folk song called In South Australia I Was Born. Anyone know it? Yeah. 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 So uh, we, we'll start off by singing our little chorus and we've got a couple of verses and if you feel like going to sleep, put your head on the table, <laughs> that's quite alright. On other ball links we do play, hack away, balls are straight, chase the sun all the way, we're bound to West Australia. So Juna holes were a piece of pie, hack away, chip away. As all seen by Jeff's drone in the sky, we do like South Australia. On the morning we do play, hack away, balls are straight. Takes the sun all the way, we're bound for West Australia. See, I, I told you it's not terribly musical, but I still <laughs> That's it. We played windmills in the rising sun, hack away, chip away, but wombat hole got a hiding to none. The best we now head to West Australia. On the ball links we do play, hack away, balls are straight, chase the sun all the way, down the west of Australia. Then ding goes down and borderoo, hack away, chip away, met Bernie the singing pirate too. We'll keep <laughs> heading for West of Australia. On the ball links we do play, hack away, balls are straight, chase the Better. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's better. 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 That
Perform today at Brumby's Run, Hack away, chip away, bugger, miss the hole in one, we're bound for West Australia. <laughs> One final thing, we'd like to sling this a little slower. We'd just like to say to Captain Alf and all his crew, hack away, chip away. How can we ever really say thank you for a wonderful trip to West Australia? Thank you. Thank you.